we at the final of our series of lessons on on the seven sins of Christ. So uh, so Stiggers gave me it's uh, it is finished, which is which is the, my topic today. It is finished, which I'm adding on to it. Jesus is the conclusion of the whole matter. Yeah. Amen. So we've heard that. Amen. From the sins of Christ that. The Father uh, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Behold thou s- your son. Behold your mother. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, I thirst. And he said, Father, into your hand I commend my spirit. And today we'll talk about it is finished. Amen. Jesus used that word, that Greek word, teletesta meaning paid in full. Amen. They wrote that on letters and bills and loans, amen, to declare that the debt is paid. People sung out on it because it was a shout of victory. Amen. Now let us read over in the book of St. John, the 19th chapter, and the 20, uh, look at the 28th verse. And so after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, I said all things, he's the conclusion of all the whole matter, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled it, it spun with vinegar, and put it up on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. Jesus is the end of everything. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. But he said, I am the living bread that come down from heaven. And if anyone eat of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give him is, I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Listen, don't just be a starter, but purpose in your heart today to be a finisher. Everybody, anybody can start something, but everybody can't finish it. Brother Henry told us last week as he was running track, he said it, that he stopped the race. He quit the race. But and his coach told him, you never quit a race. You finish, you never end it, you finish your race. So it's not so much how we begin this thing, but it do, it's a definite concern how do you finish it. So many began well, but they don't finish, but they finish poorly, or they don't finish at all. The children of Israel started out well. My God, they had a departing of the Red Sea. They walked through, they walked through it on dry land. All the Pharaoh army got drowned. It. They started out real good, but they ended up all died in the wilderness. King Saul, Amen, had a good beginning. They called him. He's a, he's one of the prophets, and he was beloved of the people, but he had a bad ending. Samson had a bad ending. Lot had a bad ending. Solomon had a bad ending. Uh, y'all don't hear me now. And, the, and Paul said, demons has forsaken me because he loved this present world more than God. Demons had a bad ending. Amen. So if we're going to finish this thing, we got to look to God, the one that begun the work and the one that assigned the work to us to do. You can't do this work apart from God and without God's help. The angel had to shake Elijah out of his sleep and said, rise up and eat because the journey is too long for you. 
You're going to need supernatural help from a supernatural God. All you young folks, you're going to need the help of God. The weary, the young will faint. Amen. The strong man will lose his strength at this thing here. Jesus commanded the disciples, don't you leave Jerusalem till you be endued with power from up on high. You need some help from above, people. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, black people, white people, polka dot people, you need some help from above. Act 9 and 16 said, he said, for I will show him, and he's talking about Paul. He said, I will show him a thing that he must suffer for my name's sake. See, the assignment that God gives us is not always going to be easy. I, I know, I know, we, we want the easy way. We've been taught easy. Amen. I want, I want easy parenting. I want easy jobs. And I want to make easy money. We're always looking for the easy. But God, the thing that God gives you to do is sometimes hard and difficult to do. Elijah was afraid and he began to run for his life. And he prayed, God, take my life. I just want to die. Do you get so tired sometime of fighting? Amen. Do the joining get so tough and get so rough? You just want to throw up your hand and wave the white flag and walk away? It gets that way sometimes. You ain't the only one that's going through. You're not the only one that is suffering. <laughs> Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He made a statement and said that I will not speak no more in his name. I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to speak no more. But he said it was like a fire shut up in my bone. He couldn't stop. It was, it was hard, but he wouldn't stop. Listen, Jesus' assignment to redeem man was not an easy assignment. Because he had to make atonement for your sins and my sin. He had to satisfy a just and holy God. Amen. See, we, 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 we think this is a game or something, but this was a serious matter that Jesus undertook. He had to satisfy a holy and a just God. Amen. The penalty of, for sin, amen, is suffering. It's pain. It's death. Everything has to be paid in full. Dying wasn't enough. It would have been great if Jesus would have just died, but it wouldn't have been enough. Because what you're going to do is step out, step out doors and cuss the mailman out or do something crazy. Just to die for your sin wasn't enough. But the Bible said Jesus, amen, rose, amen. He died for our sins, and he rose for our justification. It wasn't an easy job, but Jesus did it. Jesus said, I have finished all the Father has given me to do. He said, I've finished the work which you've given me. Jesus refused to die until he got through with the job. He just wouldn't give up until he had finished the job. I guarantee you some of us is going to die with an unfinished list. A thing we should have done. But Jesus' list was complete. His job was complete. When Jesus cried, it's finished, he mean that there was nothing, there was no need to add anything to this work. In order to redeem mankind, it's all done. 
Amen. Men want to add things to it, but Jesus said it's all finished. You don't have to, you don't need no priest. I don't have to sell no cakes and bake no pies. I don't have to knock on nobody's doors, amen, to get salvation. It's only in Jesus Christ, amen. This is the work that God told us that Jesus, this is the work that you believe upon the Son. Do what I tell you to do. Live like I told you to live. This is the work. Jesus is the final conclusion to the whole thing. Jesus is where transitionary become the permanent. Jesus is where the beginning, amen, meet the end. Jesus is where the author, amen, meet the finisher. Jesus is where the alpha meet the omega. Amen. Jesus, amen, is the end of the law. He satisfied every intent of the law. Bulls and goats wasn't enough. It was insufficient. How can the blood of bulls and goats satisfy your sin debt? Those are animals, amen. You needed another, you needed a man, a holy, godly man. Because it was by one man, amen, we went into sin, and it got to be by another man that takes us out. Woo! Y'all don't like my teaching. The priest, amen, amen, wasn't enough, amen. They offered, they offered sacrifices, but they had to offer sacrifice first for themselves because they were sinners. But God raised up a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Ooh, amen. Had no beginning and had no ending. No father and no mother. Amen. The king of pre, uh, of the the king of uh, the prince of peace. Amen. The king. Amen. Stand forever. The king of righteousness. You got a priest now that intercede for you that is holy and righteous. Listen, Satan have done his thing. And his thing is rebellion. He rebelled against God. He, 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 he did that thing. And know what he did? He didn't stop there. But he came down and touched me and you. And we join in on the rebellion. You know what sin do? Sin never paints itself to be what it is. It always paints itself to be beautiful. When you see the devil, you won't see an evil, uh, uh, ugly, grotesque creature. You're going to see a beautiful, shiny, bright creature. The devil makes sin look good. And that's why you and I didn't get out of it real quick because he made it look good, feel good, and some of us said it is good. <laughs> it took the Holy Ghost. It took the conviction of God's spirit, amen, to draw us from that sin business. To make and give us a new heart, a new nature. We join in the rebellion with the devil. So when we are sinners, amen, that's saying that I resist God. I protest God too. I don't like his lifestyle. I don't like what he's telling me to do. When you are in sin, don't you talk about you love God? The Lord said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But God had to silence all his critics. Because when the angels sinned, there was no place for repentance. Amen. There was no place for repentance for fallen angels. Salvation, there is no salvation for fallen angels. Amen. So the devil thought, okay, if I get man to sin, which is God, pride, possession, amen, I, got, I take him to hell with me. But God, amen, did something that nobody could see, amen. Now, the universe talking about, amen, will God do the same thing to, to man that he did to, to the devils and to the angels that's fallen? But God was wanting, God said, I'm going to show you my love. See, unless you see love tested, you'll never know whether it's really love or not. 
But God's love was tested and tried. For the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God put his love to the test so that the world and the universe will know that God is a loving God. God put his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness to the test because God said, I will make a way. I will receive man. I will restore man. I will accept man, and I will forgive man of all their sins and all their iniquities. Amen. I'm going to look away from them. So in Romans 5 and 8, the Bible says God demonstrated he put all the naysayers, he put all the demonic spirit, and all the people that say, well, I don't think God will forgive. Amen. He demonstrated his love towards us. In Romans 5 and 8, it say that while we were still sinners, he didn't wait till you got good. I done seen people leave the church and say, well, I'm going I'm to go and get myself right, then I'm going to come back. I never seen them come back. You can't go and get yourself right. Jesus didn't wait till you got better. He died, as Brother Henry say, he died with you when you was on the pole. He died with you when you were taking that hit. Amen. You were smoked up. You were jacked up. Amen. You were tore up from the flow up. Amen. And he still died for you. When you were telling all those Jesus jokes out there, when you were talking about the preacher, amen, he had died for you. Y'all know how we get. When we get high, we start getting religious, don't we? Every time we got drunk, we start talking about Jesus. <laughs> But the Lord died for us when we were in our worst state, when we were in our worst condition, he died for us. I've already forgiven you. You just have to go and pick up the check. The Bible says God revealed his great love and his redemption in his willingness to forgive us and restore broken man. So Jesus saying the process is finished. Everything I need to do, I've completed it. There's nothing more to be tested, nothing more to be tried, nothing more to be proved by anyone or by to, uh, to anybody. It is finished. He's the period that completes the statement. When you put a period at the end of your statement, it's a complete sentence. The thought is complete. You, don't, you can't add nothing to it. If you put a comma now, and if you put an and or a but now, you can change the thought. You can turn the thing all around. But Jesus put a period there. It sealed the deal. It's finished. In Exodus 17, 17 and 6, Moses was commanded to strike the rock one time. There's a picture that God was trying to paint for us. Just hit it one time. Jesus came to offer his life for us one time. See, there's not going to be another. Don't believe that stuff by reincarnation. Don't, you don't believe that stuff, you're going to get another opportunity. It's given to the man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Jesus is not coming back no more. God is not going to offer his son to be whipped, amen, and mocked, amen, and tortured no more. God is not going to allow his son, amen, to have your sin and my sin placed upon his uh, anymore. God is not going to allow his son to be separated from him oh, no more. See, we don't get it. We don't get it. Jesus is God, and he allowed sin to be placed upon him, his life. And that caused that separation, that terror between him and the Father. He's a father. It's always, I'm always want to please. I, 
always been with you, but now there's brought this separation. God is not going to allow that anymore. You and I got one opportunity. While your heart is still beating and the blood is still running warm through your vein, we got to make a decision who we going to serve because we're not coming this way again. I keep telling us there's going to there's gonna be another man, but not this kind of man. This man here is an antique. It's an antiquated man. We'll not, it will not be any more flesh and blood people like we are. Amen. The next man you're going to see is going to be born after the image of Christ. Amen. Don't, 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 don't miss this train to Georgia. This is the only way to heaven. Buddha is not the way. Hare Krishna is not the way. Amen. Come on now. Islam is not the way. Come on. It's not the way. I don't care what they're saying. It's not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Y'all can believe them if you want to, but you better get you better understand this. And the good thing about it, Jesus said, if you would, I stand at the door and knock. If you would open the door, I'll come in and I'll give you some understanding. I will reveal myself to you. He will. I, I, I'm off. And Matthew, the 22nd chapter, there was a man that was in a wedding. Didn't have a wedding garments on, though. And the man said, what you doing here without your wedding garments? And he got him and throwed him out. Well, wh why, why did he do that? Because, see, the customer is that the, the one that invited you would give you the garments that you need to wear. So this man come in without with his own stuff on. See, some of us, we think we're going to make it in our own righteousness, in our own goodness. We're gonna think, we think we're going to make it by somebody else, what somebody else did. But the Lord said, no, you got the word these garment. This righteousness that I give you. You can't make it by yourself and on your good works and on your good looks. You can't make it, amen. It's the righteousness of Christ, the only thing that God will accept. That's the only offering God will accept. So you're not going to make it. Oh, I, and, and my well, let, let me go and burst some more bubbles and, step and kill some more sacred cows while, while I'm here. Because I might not see you no more. See, a lot of us put our trust in our denominations. Or in our churches. Or I go to New Life Fellowship. I go to Emmanuel. For good that you do, amen. But Emmanuel can't get you saved. You got to know the Lord for yourself. Amen. Oh, oh, it's not, you can't trust in your denomination to get you saved. It's only through Jesus. You're going to have to know Jesus for yourself. And we'll brag on our little denomination, amen. Okay. But you better be bragging on Jesus. You better be getting hooked up. You can go to any nomination you want to, but you better be hooked up and, and, and linked up with Jesus, though. Amen. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say to you. That's all I'm trying to say. Know him. Know the man. Know Christ. Ask the, ask the uh, fourth chapter, 12th verse, that neither there's salvation in any other. Make that plain, didn't he? I told you, you got to have a preacher to mess you up on this. He said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we may be saved. But there's a must there. Must be saved. There are no other name. There are no other way. There's no other door. For Christ 
has suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us into God. And I'm getting ready to close. John said, this is love. That not that we love God. Not that we love God. We, we didn't come here because we love God. Not at first. Don't be lying in church. I didn't want, I didn't want anything to do with God. Let's be honest. I didn't want anything to do with God. Everything I wanted to do, God told me not to do. I was reading the Bible. I said, God, you don't want me to have no fun. Because, see, that old, that old flesh nature of mine, that, that fallen nature of mine opposes God. Because God is righteous. It's, this is love, not that God... Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son. See, I mean, God, I mean, you, this thing to open up, you understand. God sent his son. If God hadn't have sent his son, his son never would have went. Ooh, y'all didn't get that. Y'all, y'all didn't get that. That went over y'all head. God so loved the world. God sent his son. The son said, I will. He was the atoning sacrifice for our sin. So what Jesus did on this cross, he said, my part is finished. I've done and have done everything that, is, that I'm supposed to do, that is expected of me to do. Amen. All is left now is for the Father. Put it back in the hands of the Father. All is left now to do is for the Father to accept my sacrifice. See, God had to accept this sacrifice. God had to look over it, top to bottom. See, God ain't like us now. Because we got, we got kin folk, we'll look over stuff. I told you once before, I, I don't never flunk myself. Did she tell you to grade yourself? I, I ain't never flunking myself. <laughs> Y'all know how that work. <laughs> then she was so small, she said, pass the paper in the back. <laughs> and then you had these old crazy girls. I mean, they, oh, Ernie, you missed this, you missed this, you missed this. <laughs> I ain't flunking myself. But look, God looked over the sacrifice, and he wouldn't exempt nothing. He wasn't going to overlook no faults and nobody's sin. Everything had to be perfect. Everything that, that was written of Jesus had to be fulfilled. Every requirement of every righteous requirement had to be fulfilled. He had to be a perfect sacrifice. Jesus said, the prince of this world come, and he finds nothing. I wasn't looking and giving Google eyes to Mary. I wasn't messing around with Martha. I wasn't lying to Peter. He said, the, the prince of this world come, and he don't find nothing in me. A perfect sacrifice. God was looking over him. And then what God said, well done. Is this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Well done. And then God raised him. See, it had to be by the power of God because Jesus was now had sin on, up on his life. It had to be by the power of God that raised him up. And the Bible tells us that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead Y'all might look, y'all might be looking at me funny, but it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is gonna get me up. And it's gonna get you up on that day. Listen, in conclusion.
The greatest accomplishment that any Christian can make is to say, it is finished. Every one of us, I keep telling you, 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 you're not here by accident. You're not a biological mistake. I know your mama might have said it, your daddy might have said it, but you are not a mistake. You here for a purpose. You 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 got a job and assignment to do. The greatest statement that we can make is that it is finished. Like the Apostle Paul, he said, I've finished my race. I've completed this course. He said, it's completed. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. That's what Jesus said. It is finished. I've completed the assignment that you've given me. And come to think about it, I think about Cousin Earl. When he was working down here on this Saturday, and he asked me, and then he went and asked my wife, is there anything more that you want me to do before I go? Is there anything else I can do before I go? And we told him, no, Earl, it's complete. We finished. And Earl went on home. We, we thought he was going home, but Earl went home. Because his job was finished. He did everything he's supposed to do. Nothing undone, amen. Did everything he's supposed to do. And he went on home. People of God, I want to encourage you today. Let's complete the job. Let's finish it. I know it gets hard sometimes. And the devil tell you all the time about throwing up the white flag and surrender and get up, but complete the job that God have assigned you to do. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you the honor today, God. We ask that you would touch your people and encourage their hearts, Lord, and lift them up today. Lord, because you have done the work, you have finished this thing for us, God. Oh, God, and we are receiving it and we are accepting it, God, that we are victors and not victims. We are overcomers, God, today by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony and no loving not our lives even unto the death. God, do a work in your people, God. Do a transformational work in your people's lives right now. And we give you glory and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap today.